Hi, welcome back to It's So Worth It, So Make It. I'm Claudia and today I am super excited to share this dessert recipe with you. This recipe is my all-time favorite dessert. It's called Shomloi Galushka and it comes from Hungary. And this recipe comes to me courtesy of my friend Maria. So I would like to say, Kusanam Sepen, Maria, thank you so much for sharing this recipe with me so that I could share it with everyone else. And also a quick thank you to my friend Bensa who was kind enough to translate it into English for me. All right, now that the thank yous are over, let's get started. So let's gather our ingredients together and make it. Perfect. Now that we have all of our ingredients gathered in front of us and ready to go, here's how we need to start. Set your oven to 350 degrees. Then let's make our cake. So it's a super easy sponge cake. And the first thing we want to do is beat our egg whites in a stand mixer. And I like to use my stand mixer and an electric mixer so that I can mix the egg whites in one and the sugar and the egg yolks in another bowl. I'm going to need two bowls and so will you in just a few minutes anyway. So I just do those things at the same time. So the teaspoon of cream of tartar, which I will add to the egg whites. And I'd like to say that I have modified the original recipe given to me by Maria just slightly. This was one of my changes that I made. And the other changes, I doubled the cake recipe because well, I just like a lot of cake. So if you want, you can half the recipe for the cake and just make that and that would be perfectly fine and that would be the original from my friend. All right, so now the cream of tartars and the egg whites. I'll add the powdered sugar to the yolks and I will beat them both up at the same time. Here we go. All right, everything is done. And here's what you're going for with your egg yolks and your powdered sugar mixture. You're going for this really nice pale yellow color. And the reason that we use uh, powdered sugar here, and actually Europeans use powdered sugar in all their baking, and they have some really good reasons for that. The first reason being it dissolves more completely and when you're eating your final product, you're not gonna have that gritty sugar stuff in your mouth and nobody likes that. So powdered sugar is the way to go. And I think that's a really smart thing. So here's what we want with our egg yolks and they're just a beautiful pale color. So that is perfect. And for our egg whites, we are looking for stiff peaks. So beat them all to stiff peaks and they take about the same amount of time actually and it probably took me, mm, I'm gonna guess here, maybe three and a half to four minutes for both of them. So it really helps to have two mixers. You can get that done lickety split. Okay, so that's perfect. And I will show you now how to combine all of these things together. All right, so I have my flour, the 12 tablespoons, my one tablespoon of baking powder and my pinch of salt in a little bowl and I'm just going to combine those a little bit here. Very easy. And I'm going to add a little bit of those into my uh, egg yolk mixture. Now, we need to do this kind of carefully and slowly because we're going to start folding the egg whites in and the flour alternately, okay? Because we want to keep the uh, air in our egg whites. And yes, we did use the uh, cream of tartar to help us with that, but I need to do that because I'm not an expert on <laughs> keeping air in egg whites. So uh, I'm just going to cheat a little bit by using the cream of tartar and it will help me keep an airy cake. So, all right, so now I'm just going to combine these things and at first it's okay just to mix it up, no problem. We need to uh, keep the batter at this point 
a little bit wet as we add our flour in because it, you and you don't want to add the flour all at once because you're going to come up with a paste and it's really difficult to get it out of that paste form you have to kind of mix forever and uh, it's just not um, it's not very fun so do the alternate thing here and you'll come up with much better results for your sponge cake okay so we're just going to mix that in a little flour a little egg whites and you keep doing that until all your egg whites and all your flour have been used all right now we have got almost all of our egg whites incorporated into our batter and you just want to sort of kind of come under and bring the batter over the egg whites and then cut down the middle turn your bowl and do it again and you kind of just keep doing that until your egg whites are pretty much incorporated they don't have to be fully incorporated. There's going to be a little tiny bit of streaking. <laughs> it's the only real streaking you can get away with in the kitchen, right? So it's fine. Don't worry about it at all. And you're going to mix this a little bit more when you add your flavorings anyway. So don't get excited if it's not totally uh, mixed well. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this in half because we want to make two layers of cake. So I'm going to just sort of uh, make a rough line down the middle. And here's why you need that other bowl again, because you need to put the other half of the batter back in to that bowl because you need to have something to uh, mix your flavorings in. All right, now, this is where the real fun begins here, I think, because you have some options to add flavorings. Now the Hungarians love, and I would say the Czechs do too, uh, and probably most other uh, countries who love pastries, to add nuts to their batters and things. If you are allergic to nuts or you can't have nuts for whatever reason, skip this step, it's totally fine. Go with your cocoa powder, make it chocolate, leave it plain. So uh, what you can do is nuts on one side, chocolate on another, chocolate and nuts, plain, any combination that you can think of, any way you want to do it. So I'm going to add the nuts to this bowl. And this is about, oh, I would say five or six tablespoons worth of uh, grated walnuts. And that's good for there. And then I'm going to sift a little cocoa powder, maybe a couple teaspoons worth, into my other bowl. And this is why we need two bowls, because we can't obviously mix those things all up together all right so now i'm just going to gently fold my cocoa powder into this side and it's the same procedure as you did before it's going to deflate a little bit don't worry about it it's not going to be a problem in the long run we are home cooks we're not professional cooks i want to make desserts for you guys and show you how to do it and still have success but you know Gordon Ramsay isn't watching, hopefully, and he won't come to your house and yell at you. <laughs> so there we go. And that's pretty much all we need to do for that one. Okay, good. Now, mix the other side. Same procedure, folding in, cutting through. You can turn the bowl if you like, just until you have all of that mixed together. All right, looks really good. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait until this is done. It's going to be amazing. All right, so now we need the ever-present cookie sheet lined with our parchment paper. Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to put half of the batter on one side and the other half will go on the other side. And so you kind of just want to make them the sides as even as you possibly can. And it's going to seem like you have more batter for one flavor than you do the chocolate. And I think it's just because when I, or maybe it's just me, <laughs> when I fold it down, uh, the, the cocoa in there weighs it down a little more. And spread it out on the sheets about halfway across, like so. And make it as flat as you can without deflating it too much.
All right, good. Perfect. Now the other side, the chocolate mixture. Oh, it's going to be so great. I love the sponge cake uh, recipe for this dessert. It makes a really nice and light and airy cake. And it's perfect <coughs> for absorbing the other flavors which we're going to add in just a little bit. Okay, so again, we're just going to spread that out about halfway on the pan. And again, don't worry too much if it's not perfectly even. Just as long as it gets baked, that's what we want. And you want it approximately to be half. Okay, good. Now, I don't know why, but the... Uh, the plain side always seems to be bigger for me. Every time I make this, it's this way. Anyway, we're going to bake this in the oven, 350 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. After 10 minutes, I would check on your cake, do the toothpick test to see if it comes out clean in the thickest part. If it does, take it out then. If it's not quite cooked, leave it in for the full 12 minutes. Okay, now while your cake is baking, you can proceed to make your pudding filling and you can also make your chocolate sauce. Now, a word about the pudding filling. I would highly recommend that if you are so inclined to make your own homemade custard or Bavarian cream, that would be just perfect. Go ahead and do that if you're so inclined. But I think it's okay at this point to take a little bit of a cheating shortcut, and you can use these European packages of vanilla pudding. They're quick, they're easy to make, and I think they taste so much better than the stuff that comes in this box. Do not use this, no. Kill it with fire. That, this stuff has no place in this dessert. It may have a place somewhere else, but it should not be anywhere near your Shomloi Galushka. Do not use that. Please, please do not use that. If you don't believe me, make a packet of this, Make a packet of that and taste them side by side. You'll know what I mean after you've tasted those. This stuff is so much better. So go ahead and make your pudding and here's how you do that. In a saucepan over medium high heat, combine your milk and your pudding mix. Using a whisk, stir constantly until it starts to come together. It'll come together very quickly for you, so don't walk away from it. You don't want it to burn. After it comes together, keep stirring for one minute, then put it in a bowl to cool. In another saucepan set over medium heat, combine your milk and your powdered sugar for your chocolate sauce. Stir until the powdered sugar is dissolved. Then add your cocoa powder and stir until that's dissolved. Keep stirring for about five minutes until it thickens up. After it's thickened, stir for two or three more minutes, then set aside to cool. All right, now after you have made your pudding, set that aside to cool, set your chocolate sauce aside to cool. Now, the really important thing about letting the pudding cool, it must absolutely not be warm at all when you go to mix in your powdered sugar and butter mixture because this is what happens if you do that. <coughs> Not a pretty sight, is it? No, so please make sure that your pudding mixture is at warmest room temperature, if not just a bit cool in the refrigerator. And I, when I put it in the refrigerator, let it cool, put a little plastic wrap on top to make contact with the top of the pudding so that skin doesn't form, and that'll help you to mix it up later. So uh, now the next thing we're going to do while those things are cooling and our cake has cooled completely is we are going to uh, cut our cake in half this way. So because what we're going to do is we're going to make two halves of this cake. One piece is going to go on top of the other with some yumminess inside. So uh, now it doesn't matter a whole lot at this point that I didn't make things even. We're just going to cut a straight line down the middle and that's that. So here we go. This is approximately the middle. <laughs> That's what I said last time. All right, and just 
cut straight down. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and I'm going to take one half. Let's take the half with the nuts. And I'm going to fold it over and just let the paper just come right off. And no problem there. Just take it right off of the paper. Gently can do it. Perfect. And I'm going to put it top side down. Just like that into our pan. And you can start assembling this on a plate, a longer plate, or something like that. It doesn't matter. Whatever you have, you can put on there, no problem. All right, now that I've done that part, I'm going to go ahead and start mixing in our rum with our apricot jam. And you could use jam, preserves, all fruit. It's totally up to you. You don't even have to use rum if you don't want to. If you want to uh, put just rum aroma in there because you don't want the alcohol, that's totally fine. I'm not going to come to your house and tell you that's illegal because I'm busy eating my own shomoy galushka. So that's, <laughs> you're off the hook there. Go ahead and do that. It's totally fine. All right, so you just mix this up and we're going to set that aside for right now. And then we're going to take our pudding which we have let cool completely. And then we're going to mix up our butter, which is at room temperature. And that is really important because when we're mixing up the butter and the powdered sugar, we want it to be approximately the same consistency as the pudding. And that will allow these two items to be mixed together successfully. And you will not come up with that horrible curdly mess that I showed you earlier. Okay, so we're just going to get this mixed up. Just takes a second. And then we're going to add it to our pudding and mix that together. And you might be asking me, you know, Claudia, why are you doing that at all? Well, here's the reason what I think. The first thing I think is that we didn't add any sugar to the pudding when we were cooking it on the stove. So now is the time to do that. So we're adding our sugar now. And also the butter I think is really important because I think it just gives the, it just gives a silkiness, a really nice mouthfeel to the pudding. And I think it just improves it. You know, what does butter not make better? Come on people, we know we love butter. This is not a low calorie cooking show, okay? You guys should know that by now. I'm not afraid of calories, you know, especially outside my zip code. It's fine, <laughs> okay? So now, as you can see, my pudding and the butter has come together quite nicely. I'm very happy with this because I've had a few fails in the past, which I will not speak of anymore. <laughs> and done. Now, now we can begin to assemble. We are almost at the finish line and I cannot wait for this to be done. All right. Now, the original instructions I was given were, were to put the jam on first. However, I found it too much of a challenge for myself to put the pudding on top of the jam. So, I put the pudding on first because I think it's easier to spread around on the cake. But you don't have to do it that way. You can try doing it the other way. It's fine. And I'd like to mention at this point that there are many, many, many versions of this dessert in Hungary. There are probably at least as many or more versions of Shumle Galushka, which actually means dumplings from Shumlo, uh, in Hungary as there are pie recipes in the United States. So my recipe that was given to me by Maria is not the end all be all. I encourage you to explore the other recipes you can find on the internet. Find the one that you like the best and savor it forever because, oh my gosh, if there's ever dessert that deserves a place of honor in your repertoire, it's this one. All right, good. Now, the pudding is on. Next thing we do, the jam. And we're going to put about half of the jam on now, and the other half is going to go on top. So 
we're just going to spread that around just like we did the pudding. And oh my gosh. Oh, it smells that apricot and the rum together. Wow, that is a deadly combination. And <laughs> you'll find out when you're eating this dessert how deadly it is. It's just simply amazing. Okay, so now we're pretty much done with that. Good, that's looking great. And now for the other half of our cake, and I'll just bring it closer, and I'll flip it over and take the paper off. And it will peel off pretty easily if you use parchment paper, no problem. And here is why it doesn't matter that you went over a little bit with the with the other uh, batter in the when you cooked it because it's going to be hidden in here and that's a good thing. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just going to take this and just press down a bit because I like getting all that stuff together. It's just truly magical and wonderful and wow, I, I just love this dessert and I, I can't stress enough how much I love this dessert and you will too when you make it and you eat it. All right, so now we put the rest of our jam right on top and spread it out just like we did before until it's evenly spread out over all the cake, covering all the cake because you want that delicious apricot filling. And by the way, you don't have to use apricot. If you don't like apricot, don't use apricot. Use peach, use cherry, use whatever you like. I happen to love apricot. It's the flavor of uh, pastries that I grew up with uh, with my mom, so I have just loved it all my life, but you can use a different flavor if you like. There's no problem with that. I have made this with cherry before. Oh, amazing with cherry, but even more amazing with the apricot. Okay, perfect. So the cake is going to absorb the flavor of the apricot and the rum, and it is just going to be the happiest thing that ever was. All right, now, our finishing touch here. Well, at least for the assembly. Okay, so now we're going to cover the entire thing with a generous dusting of unsweetened cocoa powder and just cover the whole darn thing. And then you can just keep going. If you want to cover every little bit, please feel free to do so. Cocoa powder didn't hurt me. Probably not going to hurt you if you're watching this video. All right, perfect. Okay. Now, she is fini. This is beautiful. I absolutely am happy with this, and you will be too when you make yours. Now, the only thing left to do is this is a very big decision. And I'm always very much, oh, this is my conundrum. Do I eat it now, which I definitely could eat it now, or do I put it in the refrigerator for a few hours and let those flavors come together? And the reason it's such a difficult decision for me, which you will discover on your own, is after you eat it, when you make it, you don't want to wait. You want to eat it now. But then the other little, the little, the devil on, on this side is saying, eat it, eat it, the angel, wait, let it get happy. Oh, I don't know what to do. So for right now, I think I will just set it aside. I'll put it in the refrigerator. And the only reason that I'm doing that is because I have a consolation prize. And that is, I have one that's been in the refrigerator <laughs> all night long. And it is so ready for me to eat it. So here we go. This is how you serve this absolutely amazing dessert. So we are going to cut a slice and we are just going to absolutely enjoy this. Now, let's see here. I think, oh, how about a piece yay-ish big? 
And by the way, this recipe serves one hungry woman or maybe six or eight other less hungry people. So you can decide how that's going to go down. And I will tell you how this is going to go down. You scoop that up. Put this on your plate. Oh my gosh, I can just, I can tell by the way it sounds when I slide it off of the, <laughs> when I slide it off of the spatula. Oh my gosh. Now, I've had this recipe, or not this recipe in Hungary, I've had a different recipe in Hungary, but when I went to visit my friends in Hungary, I had this amazing dessert at a small little cafe, dessert cafe, and the way that they served it, which I absolutely love, is covered completely in chocolate sauce. And this is why you made that chocolate sauce, which I would highly recommend you make a double batch of because this stuff is so amazing, you are going to use it for everything. Oh, it's just looking great. And we need some more because you know what? You can never have too much. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, the stuff was covered in chocolate sauce. And this is the other time. The first time I thought it was okay to cheat on a recipe here was the pudding packet. This is the other time I think it's okay to take a shortcut is the whipped cream. If you want to make your own, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. And we're just going to put some whipped cream all around. And you have to do this. I mean, it just, just adds such lusciousness and beauty to this. I mean, look, look, just look at it. Oh my God. All right, now, the only thing I did not understand when my friend translated the recipe for me was the end of the recipe, it says you scoop little bits and put it on the plate. And after I made it the first time, I said, what the heck does that mean, little bit? You don't eat this kind of dessert with little bits on a plate. You get yourself a big spoon like this and you dig in. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm going to do that again now to show you how to eat this dessert. Because you have to go out and get a huge spoon like this. You're going to understand what I mean after that first bite. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right, people. Now, I have to say, Maria, this recipe that you share with me is way better than the one I had at the cafe in the town where I visited you. Sorry to that cafe, but this stuff is absolutely amazing. People, make this recipe. It's an excellent dessert to make for a holiday or on a Tuesday or whatever the heck you feel like it, because you will keep coming back to this again and again when you start to make it. And I'll tell you something. <laughs> if you make this cake and it doesn't make you want to subscribe to my channel, nothing will. Mmm. It's so shamloy. Make it. It's so worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great time making this dessert. I hope you love it as much as I do. We will see you next time. Bye.